The testimonies are still coming in. We are still learning more by the hour, by the minute of the most unspeakable evil that is taking place. <coughs> and at the same time, we have one witness to limitless good. There are stories that are beginning to emerge and some stories which will not emerge for many years will remain shrouded in secrecy of the heroism, of the bravery, as bad as things are. Was it not for the bravery, for the Masirat Nefesh of so many, so many who acted so heroically, things could be much, much worse. And we've seen the good of Am Israel. We've seen people who have paid the ultimate price, given their lives with the ultimate Masirat Nefesh, the ultimate devotion. The spirit of togetherness, the spirit of volunteering. Somebody asked me this morning about going to donate blood. If you saw the queues for hours, people from all over Israel, we have opened up, people have opened up their hearts to one another. Despite what we have seen and what we've witnessed the past few months, this is where we show who we really are, what we are really about. We've come together. How tragic that it takes evil of such magnitude to bring us together, but we have seen the good. And let us remember that good and let us stay together. Let us remember the evil we are fighting against so that we can obliterate. The second point, second point I want to make is that we have undergone and we are undergoing a collective trauma. And as we hear more and more We understand the horrific reality, the unimaginable grief that has taken place. We're all affected by it. And we're all affected by it for two reasons. The first reason is because we are all one family. Whenever a tragedy hits the Jewish people, we all feel it. No matter who we are, no matter where we are, if it's one person, we all feel it. Kavachomer. When so many, the last count I heard, 600 murdered, 2,000 injured. And those numbers will surely go up. So we're all one family and we all feel it. But deeper than that, on this occasion, with numbers like that, we don't all know it yet, but everybody knows someone. Everybody knows someone who's been affected, either somebody who's been killed, or somebody who is now on the front lines. How many people in this room have children, have grandchildren that have been called out? And we're worried, and we're scared, and we're anxious. And it's important that we validate those feelings. That is okay, and that is normal, and that is natural. This is one of those times about which it said, it's okay not to be okay. There is a place for that. There is a place for those emotions. We need to recognize that. And I'll say this occasion that if anybody feels that they need help, that it's too much to bear, there are hotlines, there are people, there are professionals, there are professionals in our community who can provide assistance. If anybody wants to call me and I can provide and I can refer you help in whatever way that I can. But take the time. We need to look after ourselves as well. Number three, and notwithstanding what I've just said, I think there, in situations like these, there is a tendency and there is a temptation to, to stay glued to the news 24 hours a day. I include myself in this. To get every single update, to know minute by minute what is going on. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not suggesting for a second that people should not watch the news. I'm not suggesting people should not know what's going on. We need to know, and it's important to stay updated. But let's think about how much, where we get our news from, how much news we get. There is no mitzvah to sit all day, every day in front of, in front of a screen. Getting those updates, the news is there to be sensationalistic. It's there to make us anxious. So let's stay away from it. Let's take a step back. And in the situation, let us focus not on listening and watching, which gives us the illusion that we're doing something when we're not. But let's think about what we can do. We haven't been called up to the front lines, but what can we do? What can every single one of us do here and now in this situation? 
Number one, we can dove. We can say to Elim. We can add things in. We can keep bear in mind the names of the soldiers, the names of the wounded, the names of people to daven for. We know that tefillah makes a difference. We don't always know how. Our tefillot are not always answered in the way that we'd want them to be. Sometimes the answer is no. But every tefillah makes an impression, no matter. And who knows how much worse the situation could be were it not for those tefillah. I heard a story on Erev Chag. I'll share with you. And let me just say before I mention the story, the Chasta Khalila. If somebody, somebody is killed, a tragedy does take place, that in no way, that does not mean the person didn't daven hard enough or there wasn't somebody davening for them. Chas shalom. that's not what it means. We don't know how these things work. But sometimes we see how the tefillot work. And the story is, it was on Erev Chag. Some of you may have seen there was a video of a car that was driving through Khawara. And an Arab terrorist came and he started firing at the car. Miraculously, the car was able to get away. There was a father, a pregnant mother, and a child in the car. Miraculously, they were saved. We're not hurt at all. It later emerged that at the exact time, at the exact time that that shooting took place, the grandfather of the family was in the Rava Yudi. He was in the old city. And he was going to go in Daven at one of the shuls in the Rava, and then he said, no, he'll go down to the Kotel. And he walked down to the Kotel to Daven Mincha, and at the exact time that he was davening Mincha, the shooting took place, and the family was saved. Was it because of those tefillot? We can't say yes, but we can't say no. And again, it doesn't mean that when tragedy strikes, anyone is at fault. It doesn't mean it was because someone didn't pray hard enough. I'm not. But prayer has an impact. Prayer is powerful. Let's dive in. It makes a difference. Beyond prayer, we can try and Act in the spiritual realm. We can learn. We can take on more things. We can take on better, more mitzvot, a better way to act. We can help with the tangible physical reality. There are calls going out, people asking for, to donate supplies, to donate funds, to donate blood for those whom it's relevant. Everybody, whatever way that we can. And again, if people have ideas and people have suggestions, please let us know. And finally, we can help just by it's not just the people on the front lines. Everybody's worried. Everybody's going through a difficult time. Just a kind word to the people around us. Just looking out a little bit more for one another can do so much and can make such an impact. And finally, number four, the last message I want to leave you with at this point is a message of emuna, of faith. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know how long this will last. We don't know what the price will be. We know where it ends. That's the easy part. We will win this war. Hashem made a promise. The Jewish people will not be defeated. The Jewish people will not be wiped out. We are here to stay. And God is on our side. That's how it ends. That's the only way. Evil will be banished like smoke. But what will it take to get there? What is the price that we have to pay along the way? That none of us know. And therefore we have, we have fear. We have worry. We have nerves, we have anxiety, but never despair. Never despair and never depression. Because Am Yisrael Chai and Am Yisrael will prevail. Rav Hirsch points out in Tehillim, Shira Ma'alot that we say every Shabbat and every Yom Tov, there are two Psukim. Two consecutive Psukim. As Yom Ruv HaGoyim Higdil Hashem Lasotim Eile. Higdil Hashem Lasotim Anu. Says Rav Hirsch, you know what the difference is? It says, as Yomru Vagoyim Igdil Hashem Lasotim Amongst the Goyim, amongst the nations of the world, only then, only when we reach the end, 
Only when we reach the ultimate geula, the redemption, and it is clear, unequivocally clear for the entire world to see, then they will say, ah, God was with these people. As Yom Ruvagoyim. But that is not the Jewish way. Even in the midst of the suffering, in the midst of the exile, in the midst of the galut, and make no mistake, our situation today is better than it has been in so many points, maybe ever in Jewish history. The scenes, the harrowing scenes that we've seen from the last day cause us all such indescribable grief, shock, and horror because that is not the normal way. For most of Jewish history, that was normal. For most of Jewish history, that's what we lived with on a daily basis. Because we have passed that, and because it is so unusual, that is why it is so indescribably horrific and shocking. But nonetheless, we have faith. Nonetheless, we know this will, we will get through it. It's not as Yomru, it's Yomru now. Higdil Hashem Nasotiman. Together, we spoke on Simchat Torah and Shmini Atzeret, but Kasha Alai prayed at Chem. How difficult it is to separate. Not to separate from one another, not to separate from Akarash Baruch Hu, together as a community, as a people. Am Yisrael Chai. With Hashem's help, we will prevail, we will succeed, and we will get through this together. I'm Yisrael Chai.